Here is another highly informative, raw, audio segment with some very important information. Hopefully, you will gain a better understanding of the few more unanswered questions in your own life. Just by listening to this, we really appreciate you for letting John Henry Media Network assist in expanding your knowledge of self. Now, listen to this. The ancient Egyptians said the goddess Aset brought fashion and weaving to the banks of the Nile. And, fashion, and cloth itself was something considered sacred, considered worthy of the gods. And so in her tomb in the Valley of the Queens, we find Nefertari offering the linen cloth to the god Ptah. Now Ptah was the creator god, and he's dressed in a shroud. And on his shroud is an X because it's showing that he's in the spiritual realm, and the X indicates resurrection in the spiritual realm. So long before Spike Lee popularized the X and made it something that anybody felt comfortable in wearing, the X was the symbol of African people countless thousands of years ago. And behind him is the Jed pillar indicating stability. It looks like kente cloth, doesn't it? Also showing the colors of red, black, green, and gold were the colors of African people countless thousands of years ago. And on the papyruses throughout Egypt, the very planting of the flax seeds, which was used to make the linen cloth, is depicted. And here we have, if we start from bottom and move to top, it's presided over by the goddess Aset. Here's her throne, as well as the netarus of the spirits, as our brother plants the seeds. It's then harvested and bound, and then taken before the god Tehuti, the great lawgiver. And once his approval is given, our brother takes the solar bark across the skies and into the spiritual realm, where we find his cot, or mummy, wrapped in the linen cloth, the most spiritual act of all. But not only were our ancestors very skilled in the weaving of the linen cloth, but the cotton in an area of the Fayum called Pelusium was of such great quality that Wallace Budge in his book The Dwellers of the Nile said that that was where the French got their word for blouse. But wool, however, was something looked at in contempt, as something worn only by barbarians. And that's why in this ad for wool we see that it's an Anglo fabric, something worn only by barbarians. And here, even we were able to make pleats in ancient times. And this tunic, dating back to the sixth dynastic period, is a pleated garment over, made over 4,000 years ago. But in Thread Magazine today, white folks are still trying to figure out how to sew with pleated fabric. And a designer by the name of Mary McFadden gives up Africa as her source of inspiration. And even the world's oldest surviving dress was found in Tarkan in Egypt and dates back to 2800 BC. But let's just take a look at some of these garments that were worn. Now here we have our acrobatic dancer sister over 5,000 years ago wearing what we would today know as the loincloth. And Don Luke in his article on the African presence in the early history of the British Isles in Scandinavia shows us a Scandinavian figure very closely resembling our acrobatic dancer sister and also wearing the loincloth. Well, out of this loincloth developed what we would today know as the underpants, which can be seen on this terracotta figure from Edfu in Egypt dating back over 3,000 years ago. But in this painting from Europe, the woman has fallen off the horse here and nothing's under those clothes. And it does not seem that English women wore drawers before the very end of the 18th century. So while we had them over 3,000 years ago, brothers and sisters, they did not even have the drawers 300 years ago. So long before Bally, long before Vanity Fair, and long before Fruit of the Loom, we had the drawers. So brothers and sisters, the most revolutionary act you can make every morning is stepping into your underpants. <laughs> and the, even the slip or petticoat, they tell us in the history of lingerie and pictures that this garment was a natural development from the fine lightweight linens produced by the artists and craftsmen of the Nile and was part of the practice of personal cleanliness for which Egypt was famous. So even that too came from you. But let's take a look at some of the outer garments. Now here you have the calasiris or sheath, which is worn here by the goddesses Neith and Selkit. Now this tight fitting garment was called the calasiris, as you can see here. But modern designers would have you believe that they were the ones who created these styles. 
But once again, that which was once sacred and worn by our goddesses is being copied and, and uh, modern designers today are making millions of dollars off of them. And let's take a look at the outer garments here. In the spring preview in Paris, if you take a look at this dress, you'll see it very closely resembles the folded and draped dress worn by Queen Anka Sanaman. Notice the rounded collar, also the gathered waistline, and the sheer see-through appearance of the dress. But Queen Anka Sanaman had her spring preview around the Nile thousands of years before. But this same style of folded and draped dress that uh, Queen Anka Sanaman was wearing, they tell us that this general pattern of dress was to be continued and repeated with variations in ways of folding and draping through subsequent eras, including both the Greek and Roman civilizations. And it persists to this day in many parts of the world, notably in Indian saris, Arab and other oriental robes, and can also be seen in the context of Chinese dress and the Japanese kimono. So what they're saying here, brothers and sisters, is we started it all. Stay tuned in. The next episode will begin soon. You have just heard another great and powerful message for our black community. Brought to you by John Henry Media Network in the United States of America, this is the place for you, your family and friends to hear. Educational messages and music from other very important black people to help build a stronger and more revolution-ready black America. Your message will awaken another sleeping giant. So, contact us today at jahu.enterprises at yahoo.com. I say again, that's jahu.enterprises at yahoo.com. Get your music or message heard by millions for another generous donation today. Gone. The sun is shining